So we left Halifax on the 9th with embarked trial staff and proceeded uh, to Newfoundland uh, to Conception Bay. We had to spend some time transiting a body of water that isn't a particularly a friendly place to be in the wintertime with lots of heavy sea spray, heavy winds, relatively significant sea state, dealing with six meter, seven meter seas. Transit between Halifax and Newfoundland proved to be incredibly challenging because of the weather. We made it safely. Some folks, of course, suffered some hardships of uh, being seasick, but that's the nature of being at sea, isn't it? A Harry the Wolf was the only ship up there. And that, that just goes to show how the characteristics of the ship and the capabilities of the Royal Canadian Navy that we can actually press that far north. The ship is really, really well built and well designed to operate in ice, particularly at night. It was challenging because of constant sea spray freezing uh, sea spray on the hull of the ship. The ship is designed uh, with heat trace systems uh, all throughout the ship to dampen any kind of freezing sea spray on the hull of the ship, but it can happen, it will happen. You see that we're dealing with pancake ice and it really just looks like a bunch of pancakes or lily pads over the sea. And uh, that's the first stage of development for ice. As we proceed further north, it gets gradually thicker into gray ice and then ultimately into first year frozen solid ice where, where the snow begins to pack on top of it and then we proceed further north into the ice that we need that meets the characteristics to meet the trial agenda. The icebergs that are uh, free calving away from uh, Greenland and, and getting caught into our current and proceeding south as they get further south and the weather begins to warm on them, they break up into smaller bergy bits. And these bergy bits are really hard, old ice, meaning that it's been frozen for a number of years, probably hundreds of years. It's harder than cement. And striking it with a ship's hull at a high speed can actually cause damage to the ship and actually punch a hole in the ship. Once the trial was complete and it was successful and the ship met the, uh, the trial's agenda requirements, we continued further north. It was the first time the crew and the trial's agenda staff would ever experience being in 10 tenths ice where the ship is actually ramming through ice, coming up on top of ice and sliding off of it and making its way further north. Because all of the sailors in the Royal Canadian Navy, they're used to avoiding uh, striking uh, anything. They're, they're not used to uh, a ship that's designed to actually hit something. and it performed extremely well in the first uh, set of ice flows. This ship is uh, extremely capable and able to, um, to safely operate in ice. As the ship stopped, a uh, polar bear, two cubs came over some uh, snow and ice and almost like they were coming over to greet us and to say hello and welcome to the Arctic. And they, they slept on the, on the uh, flow and just watched us and uh, were just curious about what we were doing up there. 
So the C-Core sample folks were on the ice, I think it was 30 minutes on the ice, and it took us about uh, 10 minutes to get them back, uh, to warm them up, then send them back out again. And we would put uh, full speed ahead on both engines, and uh, we'd have to keep that full ahead for a thousand meters, and then they would calculate the performance of the ship. And uh, the ship performed uh, handsomely. The waterways up north, they deserve to be protected. They're pristine bodies of water that deserve all of our attention. We'll operate in the north to preserve those bodies of water, to monitor, and uh, protect Canada's domestic waterways up north. But during the navigable season, you can bet that the Canadian Navy will be operating up north, supporting other government departments and supporting the people of the north.